Hi, I'm David Tannenbaum, guitarist. I'm here with the wonderful composer David Lang. And uh, we're here to discuss uh, a concert we're going to do as part of the kickoff weekend at the conservatory on the theme of politics and social justice. And I've put together a guitar program for Sunday, the 18th of September at 2 p.m. in the concert hall that is uh, on the subject of politics and social justice. And it features three American composers from three generations. So there's a piece by Henry Brandt, the great Henry Brandt, who was born in 1913. There's a piece by Terry Riley, who was born in 1935, and David Lang's piece, which we will be doing the West Coast premiere of, and he was born in 1957. So the first piece on the program is by Terry Riley, who turned 80 recently. Um, and Terry wrote this piece for an unusual guitar. It's a just-in-toned national steel guitar. And it's a guitar that I never expected to ever be playing. When you have just intonation, the consonances are more consonant. The thirds are, are more flat. The, the sense of being satisfied with a, with a major chord, it, it, it's just incredibly satisfying. There are not beats running around. It's just a wonderful physical feeling. As you modulate and get away from that, it gets more and more uncomfortable and difficult to hear. So Terry uses that in telling this story. So in 2003, George Bush was talking about going into Iraq. And there was a day in February of 2003 that represented the, the biggest protest in the history of the world, where people all over the world got out on the streets and protested this upcoming war. So, so Terry, in his inimitable way, was in a really little town in Northern California with another beat named Michael McClure. And they were doing a protest and they had little signs that said Raga Singers for Peace and they didn't have a permit and these guys got arrested and Terry Riley and Michael McClure spent the night in jail and the next morning they came in front of the judge and the judge said well you have three ways to pay this fine you can either pay X amount of money or you can go back to jail for a couple days or you could do community service and Terry said well I'm a 70 year old composer what if I write a piece of music uh, as my community service. And the judge said, well, it seems like a good idea. And so Terry wrote a protest piece that basically tells the story of the protest and that night and the first day of the bombings, which is essentially commissioned by the justice system of the state of California. So that's how the program will begin. Um, the second piece on the program is um, a piece that I commissioned in 1989 by Henry, Henry Brandt. It's called Rosewood. It deals with the destruction of the Brazilian rainforest and how that has affected guitar construction. So uh, there are seven groups of guitarists spread around the hall. And what you hear are sounds of forests being sawed and cut. And you hear sort of nostalgic pieces of the guitar repertoire in sort of a weeping way, like a group of guitarists will be instructed to play any slow piece in E minor from the guitar repertoire. So it's a tremendous piece. The very best place to be for that piece is right in the center of the hall and surrounded by all these guitars. So those are, that's the first half of the program and that is the very political part of the program. And then in the second half of the program, we're gonna do a West Coast premiere of David's piece. And I would say that's more the social part of the program, maybe a piece about identity and maybe you'd like to talk about your piece of it. Well, first of all, I love all of those stories. You know, I mean, the Terry Riley story is amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. And so, the piece is amazing. Yeah. Um, I do think there's something political about my piece as well, because I think, you know, the point of politics is, I think, essentially to recognize that we need each other, to recognize that we have an obligation to each other, that we... Um, we have a reason to be in a community. And that's why I think music and politics go so well, actually for the same reason why music and religion go so well together, is because they're essentially about someone saying, I have this idea, it exists in sound, and it goes out to a, to a bunch of listeners. And somehow the act of listening brings people together. Yes, and I think it, it creates empathy as well. You see the world through someone else's eyes, right. of course. Well. Um, this piece was, in a way, sort of um, trying to give young players an experience um, of what it was to be part of a group. You know, I played classical guitar when I was in college, not very well. And one of the things that I always thought was peculiar was it was very hard to get the same message from playing guitar that I got out of playing trombone in an orchestra mm. or 
um, playing, you know, um, bugle in the Boy Scouts or something. You know, there's um, there there was the sense that you know you're playing something, you hold it to yourself. It's very quiet, and only you can really hear it. Um, and yet, I got this commission to write a piece for um, more than a hundred young guitarists, and so I thought, here's this great opportunity to put them together to ask the questions, well, what are my obligations to each other and what does music mean? And so I thought because they were young and they were at different levels, I didn't really know how to unite them. And I thought maybe I will just ask them questions about who they are and I will make the music out of their answers to these questions. So what you get when you um, get the music is you get a series of questions and a little space at the bottom for you to answer um, these things. So every person's answer will be different. Every person is supposed to take this seriously. In fact, I, I, I think, you know, there were only a few people who, um, who I didn't think really got the project when we did this, and they were the people who answered um, wrongly, you know. I think music is really about uh, using um, sound and tool uh, as a tool to kind of investigate who you are, what you believe, what you feel, what makes you tick as a person, and what obligations you have then to the other people around you who are um, concentrating on those same things. And so I ask these questions, and I, all I really ask is that people take the answer seriously. So some of them are things that are completely cut and dried. You know, what is your favorite color? What is your age? Spell your last name. Some of them are completely ridiculous. Um, uh, if what is your favorite superpower? Um, you know, would you rather be fire or ice? And some of them are actually really, you know, kind of deep and revealing things. Where if you say, um, um, what do you do with your friends? Or, um, or what was the last time you told a lie? Or, you know, they actually are things where you could end up um, writing paragraphs of answers for these things. You know, if you took it seriously. Mm -hmm. But again, you know, what I really liked was that I, I do believe that one of the things that music does for me is that it gives me the opportunity um, to be honest with myself that most of my life I don't get, you know. Most of your life you you run around, you, um, you know, you have a job. Who wants to have a job? You know, you, um, you have to deal with other people. You know, they have their needs. They conflict with your needs, right? You know, there's nothing we do in our life, in our community, where we can completely focus on learning more about what makes us whole. And so to me, that's what music does. You know, that's, that's when music is honest, then it works. And so I thought I would give these young players this opportunity to figure out how to use music to be honest with themselves. Yeah. And the experience for the audience will be in the first half, you will hear 100 guitars and you will be surrounded by them. So the sound will move around you. In the second half, these guitarists will be a block on stage, so you will be facing them and the sound will come toward you. So these answers will be one block. A wall of sound. A wall of sound. Yeah. So I hope everybody comes to this concert. I certainly look forward to doing it. And thank you for this piece, David. Thank you, David. And thank you.